Jack Deitch here with Alex from Social Freedom, and in today's video, I wanted to bring on a good friend and client, Jimmy, who's just completed or completing our live five day immersion program here in Bali, in Asia. Now, Jimmy's actually a previous client. He's actually completed one of our five day immersions back in 2020, I believe. 2022. 2022? Yeah, 2022. 2022. So a few years back from now, and the dude absolutely crushed it. If you guys want to check out his testimony, you'll see the type of insane results he got on that program a few years back. You went to our free Facebook group on our website. But what happened is Jimmy kind of wanted to take things to the next level. He wanted to improve and have some new cool experiences. I believe after the program, you know, he took a few bills home. He had some cool experiences, like the frameworks, like the skill sets. And then afterwards, you end up taking a bit of a break, focusing on business, and I think you had like maybe one or two dollars that we've seen pretty consistently during that period. Yeah. And then, yeah, Jimmy was just like, oh, I'm gonna take a break, focus on other areas of my life. And now he's ready to get back out there and start working on the skill sets, the cool approach, and just men's self development in general. My goal in this video is to give you guys a sample size of what our live five day movement programs have looked like. And in today's session, with coaching, me and Jimmy are going to go out and hit the beaches at Echo Beach in Changu, and maybe some of the beaches around Old Man's and Finn's places like this, where there's a lot of beautiful women running around. And we're going to go out there and do some cold approach. In the process, we're going to be doing some coaching with Jimmy, He's focusing on some of his sticking points, trying to get him to the next level. And yeah, it's going to be fucking awesome. So far during the five day immersion um, here in Bali, Jimmy has already taken two goals home. Two goals. Two goals. And one of the sessions about two days ago, he actually set up three dates in the exact same day. So three dates in like a 24 hour period. Yeah. So, so far he's absolutely killing it. So I'm excited to see what he can do today. Um, but yeah, bro, like, do you have like anything you'd like to mention about some of the coaching uh, experience you've had, how you found the sessions and things like that before we continue with today's session? Yeah, sure. So I think, I think one big point that really stands out is that the fact that you mic us up and then give us like real time feedback to see not only like our sub communications, but exactly what we're saying as well. So there is very intricate detail that you're getting feedback on that nobody would ever really give you at all. If ever somebody would ever tell you these kind of like little things. So for example, right, like squaring up and just like mirroring the body language was one of those things that I just had no idea that I just had an issue with. And with like the recording, with them giving me feedback, just doing this one little thing, I just noticed that the results that I was getting and the receptivity was just so much more with just like these tiny little tweaks. So I think that's probably one of the main things that stands out, that stands out is that they can really nitpick these little things that could really like increase kind of like the results that you've been getting quite significantly. Fuck you, bro. That's awesome. And um, I guess like moving forward for, for this video, the idea is to show you guys exactly how we set things up. I'm going to show you guys how we mic the boys up and how we use the the, um, the microphones to actually listen to the interactions and just give you a few samples of our coaching and just kind of have a look at what it would look like if you did decide to come and work with us. But yeah, let's jump into the session, bro. Let's get it. So one of the first things I want to mention about our live five day immersion program, something that's unique to our company and what we do with our coaching is one, we do one-on-one -on -one coaching, which most companies don't do. Usually if you invest in an in-person coaching program, it usually be one coach, two, three, if not four clients at a time. And for us, we believe in a more personalized approach to really, you know, 10x the results for our clients. And also due to the fact that we can do one-on-one -on -one and it is personalized, we can actually mic the boys up. So something that we've done to design the coaching program to optimize the experience and actually get the most out of, you know, the interactions that you're having, the women that you're meeting and the skill sets that we're teaching is to actually mic the boys up, give them a hidden microphone where we can actually listen into exactly what they're saying when they go and approach the girls. They have the conversations, they follow the framework that we teach. And then when they come back, we can give them direct feedback in terms of what they've been doing. So to give you a bit of an example of how we do this, what we use is we use DJI mics. And the idea is we have a transmitter and a receiver. So for me, I have the receiver so I can actually listen into the recordings or the audio when the client goes and approaches a pretty goal. And then I can hear exactly what he's saying. He also, Jimmy, has a transmitter on, which is tucked into his belt and then has a hidden microphone under his shirt. As you can see here. And by utilizing this technology, which to be honest is fucking absolutely sick. It really is revolutionary when it comes to coaching. This allows us to actually give that personalized advice and not be like the stereotypical coach that'll go, oh, there's a cute girl. 
go and approach her, have a conversation and come back, give me the feedback about the conversation that you had and then try to coach with limited information from there. For here, for us, we can literally hear the entire conversation. We know exactly what's going on. And if Jimmy, which he has done a few times on this program, takes a girl on an instant date, we now know exactly where he is in the interaction, what types of conversation or topics he needs to be bringing up, what he needs to do to move things forward, if he needs to maybe make things a bit more fun and flirty, or if he needs to move things forward to the next location, or maybe even invite the girl home, we can give him real-time feedback on what to do next following Social Freedoms Framework. So that is something that's really cool about our coaching programs. So keep that in mind if you are considering working with us. So as you guys can see, Jimmy has now gone and approached a couple of cute nation girls. And um, I can hear literally everything that he is saying right now. And the idea is when you go in, you have the interaction, do everything that we teach in terms of our social freedom framework. And then as soon as he's finished, he's going to come back and I can give him some great feedback. So this is Jimmy's second approach of the day. And he just met a really cute American girl. And within five to 10 minutes of chatting to this chick, they're now on a little instant date, going for a little juice or coffee or drink or coconut, whatever they're doing. And uh, yeah, this is like kind of the power of cold approaches. So like you don't have to rely on online dating apps or your social circles to meet women. If you learn a proven framework, you learn like advanced level social skills, you learn to be more confident, more grounded, more charismatic, more relaxed. And you have the ability to go and approach the beautiful women that you want to bring into your life. You can literally just walk up to a chick on the beach and then within minutes of meeting her, take her on a day. There's no need to be swiping on maps and wasting your time with borderline fatties or like girls that you don't find physically attractive. It's like, why not just go and meet cute, attractive girls you might have chemistry with, explore the connection, take her on a date and see how things move forward from there. And I'm really proud of Jimmy for this one because to be honest, when he first approached her, she was super, super skeptical. She pretty much parred them off straight away. Um, and because he followed like our teachings in terms of persistence equals entitlement, he followed the three times rule, he stuck in, he showed some charisma and a bit of fun. Uh, he didn't take her too seriously, passed her shit tests. Within 10 to 15 minutes, she started to warm up. And then all of a sudden, she's the one pretty much implying that she'd like to spend more time with them and maybe do some form of activity instead of just walking on the beach. So yeah, this is a fucking pretty cool start to today's session. So from here, my job as the coach is just to listen into his interaction and give him direct feedback if necessary. So for example, maybe there's a few things I wanted to bring up in the conversation to build more investment and connection, different conversational topics that I think are very powerful to create that bond. Then I'll send him a text message, give him a little bit of feedback, give him some prompting in terms of what he can talk about, and then he can actually execute. Or for another example, if I want him to add a little bit more physicality, make things a little bit more mental, more sexual and flirty, I'll also give him the advice and then he can implement. And the idea is potentially, we'll see what happens with this girl, depending on her logistical availability, Maybe we can move things forward and go to another location, or maybe he's just gonna get a number and set up a date for another time. But my job is to sit here, listen in, write some notes so I can give him feedback at the end of the session, and uh, yeah, help him just optimize the entire process so we can create as much abundance in his dating life as humanly motherfucking possible. So, dude, that was probably one of the best interactions that I've seen you run uh, since working with you. Like, okay, let me explain. When you first started a conversation with her, she tried to reject the absolute shit out of you. Like, you tried to stop her, she kept walking. You tried to stop her again, she kept walking. She's pretty much calming you off, not even facing you with your body language. Like, from an outside perspective, even though I can hear everything, it looked bad. Like, I was like, all right, so it's your stereotypical blowout, which is normal for everyone. And the fact that you flipped it was incredibly good, bro. Like, I love the fact that you followed our mentality when it comes to persistence equals entitlement, following the three times rule, you were persistent, you tried three times to actually, you know, stay in the interaction and build a little bit of rapport, and it fucking worked. So, by you just staying really cool, calm and collected and not being phased by her being a little bit like dismissive and not receptive to you, I think that's what actually built enough curiosity for her to be like, oh, this guy's actually cool, he's chill, he's just vibing, cruising on the beach and having a chat to me. So. That was really impressive bro to see because she was genuinely calming you the fuck off. So that was really good. Um, the other thing that I like that you did is instead of just trying to stop her in the end, you tried twice, you just walked with her. And that's exactly what everyone needs to do. And like in future interactions, if you find yourself not being able to stop the girl in the first attempt, in the second, just walk with it creates less resistance for them. So what you did there was perfect. And that way you can just kind of buy conversation going, hold a little bit of eye contact, make a joke or two, and just stay really chill. And then after a little while, maybe 30 seconds to you know, one or two minutes, if you're comfortable, you're comfortable with you looking with her, then she gets a bigger sample size of your personality. So what you did there, bro, was fucking perfect.
Um, in terms of your conversational skills, they were good. Because at first she wasn't giving you much, but again, by using like our um, surface level personal, level one, level two questions, and even level three, like halfway through the, the walk on the beach, well, it was really good. She actually got to know her on like a much deeper level. You had a pretty good understanding in terms of what she was doing for work, her hobbies, her travels, her logistics situation, her emotional availability, which was perfect. Um, in terms of just genuine connection, I can't really fool you, bro. Like, you don't understand. I've been watching over the last five days. Your level one, two, three questions in terms of building the connection stuff that we teach is starting to get to the point now where like, I can't, I, I can't fool you, man. Like, you, you're starting to really figure it out. Obviously, there'll be a few little tweaks here and there that's a bit more advanced. We can obviously tweak throughout the rest of the coaching, but dude, you should be really proud of yourself. Um, one thing I would have liked to have seen is she did kind of express a little bit of a limiting belief around dating. Yeah. Yeah. So she hasn't actually hooked up with anyone for 12 months. Um, and for me, it's like a bit of a red flag. And you, you kind of explored it like in a trolley fun way, like giving her a bit of shit. And also funny, actually, yeah, through social media and things like this. She wasn't like your stereotypical like American girl, you know what I mean? Which did make her interesting. But I would have explored that a little bit more. Yeah. It's like, okay, so like, when was your last long term relationship? Or if you're not doing the whole dating thing, like, who hurt you? Start trying to screen out exactly what might be creating emotional blocks. Because if you did want to, you know, potentially see this girl again and be romantic with her and whatever. Um, because obviously you've got her contact details at the end there, and we've set up a date, but it's like, potentially she might now fake, because you weren't able to uncover exactly what's holding her back in terms of dating. I don't really know either. As a coach, I can't give you feedback now and go, why wasn't that solid? Because we needed to kind of nut out exactly what was going on in terms of the dating history and what was stopping her from creating romantic connections. Because in the end, bro, she went on the date. She was the one that actually implied that she would like to spend time with you. Because at first, she was trying to reject you, right? Like, palm you off. And then she was like, yeah, I'm going to go to Finn's. I'm going to go have like a drink there. And he was kind of like blase and chill about it. You didn't really say anything. And I know that you don't like going to Finn's. But it's like, it's way better to talk to a girl um, on the beach and not have to fucking, you know, listen to loud music and be in a fucking beach club. So here was way better. And like the fact that you were like, oh, I just like, I don't, I don't really want to go to Finn's. I just prefer to walk on the beach. She's like, oh, okay. Like, yeah, I'll come with you. We'll spend some time together. That was when she did that. I knew you got a really strong book. But again, just to double back in terms of the limiting beliefs around like the dating situation, it would have been good for you to sort of spill that a little bit further. Yeah. So asking, when it comes to screening for the dating history, you just kind of want to, kind of want to go from her previous dating experiences or relationships, and then maybe the last time she hooked up with someone, the last time she went on a date, and then progressively move back in a smooth, calibrated way over a period of time all the way back down to like when she first lost her virginity. If you, you don't always have to ask that question, but if you can find out all of that information relatively quickly in a casual way, you don't have to find out every detail, but just a basic framework of her dating history, very beneficial for you to move things forward. Um, your statements of intent, man, were awesome. Like, bro, yes, the open was good because you used our stereotypical opener and you went direct, fine, but like those little sexual in your windows, like saying like, you know, do you want kids? And you were talking about it, it's like, you do realize your kids are gonna have to be half Asian, right? That sort of statement of intent and sexual in your window is fucking dope. Like not many people can spontaneously throw that sort of stuff out there to make it more flirty and more mental woman. So I want you to continue to do that. There was a few times where you pushed it a little bit. So, which is cheeky and I like it, but you have to remember it's a balancing act between showing interest and a little bit of disinterest, you know, and making it making it a bit of a challenge for her and not showing too much. Yeah. Because I think you would have even noticed when you made it the first time, she was like giggling, she was super receptive, you made it the second, it kind of, she was like, didn't react the same. Yeah. So just remember like take, if you're being too positive, you're giving her too much attention and validation, um, make sure you just pull back a little bit and remember to challenge, maybe throw in a little tease, maybe, you don't have to disqualify, but maybe like a little push pull, just just some sort of emotional spike that shows some playful disinterest. That'll be fucking sick. Yeah. Um, so just be mindful of that moving forward into future interaction. Yeah, the way that you went for the number as well, in terms of setting up the date um, for the next couple of days, that was also really good. Way better than the last interaction. Yeah. Um, you followed our sequence in terms of qualifying the girl, letting her know exactly what you liked about her, and then um, suggesting that you go for a, a coffee or a juice like another time, and then getting uh, her contact details in terms of the checking of the bread, which for her was Instagram. So that was really cool too. So I'm, I'm really glad. Bro, I'm just, I'm stoked with how, you, how you're like progressing, man. Like it's really, like the second approach of the day, you're on a date with a cute American girl, you take her on an instant date, she was rejecting you at first, and then all of a sudden, solid interaction. Yeah. So, yeah, fucking dude, sick. Yeah, thanks, man. Yeah, felt really good.
Do you have any questions or anything about that intro? Anything you want to go over? Anything that you were curious about that you want some feedback on? That I haven't covered yet? I don't think so because because when it came to the process, I think for the most part I got everything I got everything streamlined. Except for maybe just digging a little bit deep into more of a religious beliefs as well, because it was Catholic. Yes. And then the dating history. Like these two, I was waiting to kind of like do it. Yeah. But then yeah, like it, it just slipped my mind really. So like yeah. it, I I know where I fucked up on like that's I think. But maybe towards like subcoms. How was like the subcom Oh no, dude, your subcoms were perfect. Okay, good. Yeah. Like considering when she was palming off at the beginning, you stayed really grounded, you still hold eye contact, you were walking um, with like decent proximity, but enough that you were you were close enough to her that it's like man to woman, but further enough away that you're not putting too much pressure on her. Um, you added a little bit of touch here and there as well, which then also creates more of a flirtatious vibe and also builds a bit of comfort. That was really good. And when you sat down, man, super laid strong eye contact, super man to woman. Um, I can't fool you on your subcom. Okay. Like, to be honest with you, bro, it's, it's, it's getting to the point now with the coaching that there's only tiny little, maybe two, three percenters that I can give you to start tweaking. And now a lot of it's just going to come down to your belief systems, how much action you take, um, and how much you just, yeah, go on, like, really learn the stuff that we teach and integrate it and get it to an unconscious competent level so you don't have to think about it as much. Yeah. Once you do that, bro, because you're already cleaning up, man. Like, you've taken two girls home this week. You've been on three dates and now an instant date on the second approach. It's like, bro, these are really elite level results. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Right. Like, you should be really happy with what you're doing. And if you just continue doing what you're doing, bro, you're gonna like, you, you've, you've cracked the code, bro. Yeah. You came to us being super shy, anxious, not having that much experience with women, being very stifled, a lot of limiting beliefs, not knowing what to do. And now look at you, bro. Yeah, that's it's true. like two programs down. It's like, multiple chicks in your life, multiple dates, instant dates, you know exactly what to do. And obviously there's still a few little tweaks. And that's fine, that's part of the journey. But yeah, you fucking figured it out. Okay, so yeah. I'm, I'm really proud of you, bro. Yeah, thank you, brother, I appreciate it. Okay, two of the logistics were just fucked. Yeah. Um, so it was, it was a day with the three dates. The first one at 9.30, she literally had to go with like less than two hours. Yeah. So I was like- So you had a logistical time constraint, yeah, not much you can do yeah, with that, not yeah. Not much you can do about that. But however, dude, she was married. What? No, 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 no. You went on a date with a married chick? No, no, she was married, but then she had like a, like, like she, she's basically broken up with her in her head. Yeah, but she's still technically married, right? But here's the thing. I fucking went, I, I fucking went in for a makeout. She met out with me. You made out with a married woman? Yeah. Fucking hell, mate. You're, <laughs> you're taking this shit to the next level, buddy. Bro, I was like, <laughs> fuck it. Like, 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 I, like, I, dude, she wasn't that hot as well. I was like, fuck it, let's go for it. Ah oh, well, and, and after that she's like, no, 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 no. I married. I have a husband at home in Singapore. And I was like, ah, don't worry about it. Like, if, like you know, you broke up in her head anyway. It's okay. You have a bad marriage. Did you try to? Did you try to tell you had no expectations if you were to go home together? I did not say that. Dude, what are you doing? I, I I've created an entire like I know huge ass fucking formula on how to deal with every concern under the sun when it comes to objection handling when inviting girls home on dates and shit. And you didn't even try like the most simple objection handling right. technique, which is to say, hey, I'm really enjoying your company. Do you want to come back for one for a drink? She goes, oh, I can't because I'm married yeah. or whatever the fuck. And you say, well, look, listen, like, I understand by me inviting you back to mine, I actually had zero expectations of anything happening. I just wanted to spend a bit more time with you in a, like, a nice, quiet environment to get to know you better. The problem That's okay. all you had to do. Okay, okay. First off, for that one is, is that she literally had to go in like ten minutes. It, like it wasn't gonna happen. Okay, so logistically wasn't she happen. wasn't logistically she wasn't actually available. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, okay. logistically. Okay, okay, okay. She was more emotionally available than logistically. Okay, okay, that yeah. makes sense. Yeah. But for context, in the future, if you yeah. do get objections like that, just use that because that's like, dude, I, I promise you, for me, man, that's like solves seventy percent of my problems when it yeah. comes to any concerns that come up. Because girls just don't want to feel pressured. Do you know what I mean? Like. Yeah. They, they like you, they have chemistry with you, they would want to hook up with you, but they just don't want to feel like it's an expectation yeah, if you were to go home. And if you can take that pressure off of them, yeah. you're good to go. Yeah. So to finish off today's session, we're going to throw Jimmy in a few more interactions at sunset because it's probably one of the best times to go out and do some cold approach here in Bali and Changu. The volume's really high, the girls are super receptive, and you have a beautiful scenery and the sunset at this time of evening too. So it's just like the best time to come out and actually meet some girls. So we're going to finish off the session with a few more approaches. Gonna listen into his interactions, give him a few more tweaks, and then at the end of this session, we're gonna do a bit of a debrief in terms of his overall experience on the program, what he needs to do moving forward after the immersion. 
So hopefully you guys now have a bit more of an understanding of how our live five day immersion programs look like, or at least a glimpse into some of our coaching sessions and what that could look like potentially for you if you did decide to work with us. So if you are someone that resonates with men's self-development, you want to improve your dating lives, you want to be more successful with women, be more confident, more charismatic, become the best version of yourself, and you would like to join us on one of our coaching programs like a live five day immersion, then all you have to do is click the link in the description to book a free consultation call with either myself, Ben, or someone for our team to make any inquiries about our coaching services. Again, we run in-person dating workshops for five days, or we have an online mentorship program that we run over 12 weeks. Whatever the inquiry, we'll look after you. All right, guys, see you in the next video.